the incompetence of the Biden administration seems to be boundless. First, the China virus. He screwed that up. Now he's screwing up the account economy. He's already screwed up Afghanistan. We're out of, we have no gas now. And we are now facing a war between Russia and Ukraine in which he has done absolutely nothing. It looks like there is going to be a war in Ukraine. Let's take a look at what's happening. Uh, if it's a good idea for Russia to do this at all, and what should we do about it? This is Gene, and you're listening to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbasses Talking Politics. Happy President's Day. I hope you guys had a great Monday. I hope you had it off. Josie ended up working. Uh, I basically practiced my guitar, did my writing, had a good time. Uh, Josie and I had a great weekend. We went to uh, we went out to dinner this week. I this weekend on Saturday night went to have some sushi. And she, outside of the fact she Josie probably broke her foot, spilled her wine, spilled soy sauce. And I ended up having sea urchin and a, 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 I don't know, some sort of egg of some sort. I think it was from some small bird. I don't know. But it was it was a bizarre meal. Lots of bizarre things happened this weekend. But we had, and those bizarre things are the reason we had such a great weekend. Okay, so it looks like this Russia-Ukraine thing is going to happen. Uh, I don't know the extent of its going uh, of what is going to happen, but this is what has happened over the weekend and yesterday on Monday. Uh, so right now there are between 170 and 200 thousand soldiers in attack position. That means within three miles of the front. Uh, some of that's changed a little bit. There's about between there's about thirty five thousand dollars in the outlying territories. These are territories that used to belong to Ukraine. But they split from Ukraine because they they have Russian Russia's sympathies. So those groups are those groups are also poised to attack. What's more, uh, apparently that group are lobbing bombs into Ukraine already. So there is stuff happening. Um, nobody that we know of has been killed, but. It looks like it's a little bit more than a training exercise. And speaking of looking a little bit more like a training exercise, uh, a big indication that there's going to be a battle is the Russians have started building mash units and have brought in blood. So and now I'm not sure where the United States is getting a lot of this information. They seem very confused about a lot of stuff, but. If the, if the Russians are bringing... You can't tell if this is stuff that is U.S. intelligence or Russian misinformation, They're disinformation. They're very good about that stuff. So, But if they're bringing in blood, this is going to happen because blood is not something that travels well. Uh, the United States is was last week issuing warnings of cyber attacks. I get warnings about cyber attacks. Those cyber those warnings are saying businesses of any size should be prepared for a cyber attack. Uh, Europe is preparing for them. Ukraine is also preparing for them. So far, there haven't been any attacks yet. Minor attacks, but that could be from China. That could be from anywhere. Now, yesterday was a big day. Um, Biden said in the morning he would agree to meet Putin in a su in a summit. At first, Biden said, "Well, I I have conditions about a summit." And then, you know, with all his strength, he caved in and said, "Okay, I'll have a summit with Putin." Putin basically said, "I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not interested in a summit. We can have a summit later when things are going on." And Putin is in no hurry. He's going to get a summit. Putin wants a summit in the middle of you in the middle of a war with Ukraine. He can do it. He'll. It doesn't matter to him. Um, Putin did have a uh, did have a speech yesterday. It was a pre-recorded speech. People thought it was going to be a live speech. People also thought he was going to do it in English. He ended up not doing it, and he made a pretty a couple of pretty 
strong announcements. The first one is that uh, the separate states, separate states like Crimea and a bunch of the little territories in eastern Ukraine are now independent states. They are not part of Ukraine. That's very disturbing. Then what he also said is, Ukraine should have never separated from the Soviet Union. There's something to remember. He is a Soviet. He was he was a director of the KGB. This guy is a he's loved the Soviet Union. He loved communism. He's running it like communism now. And so right now they are he's saying, "Hey, he's he's bringing back the old don't don't be shocked. This isn't going to be the first thing." Which is why the Europeans are a little worried because this is what the Soviet Union did. They First went into, you know, one state, then went into another country, then went into another country. And, of course, there's nobody in the United States, there's nobody in the West that's going to stop them. Because they don't seem to really care, or money, or oil. We'll get into all that. Uh, Russia has put in, put uh, peacekeepers in, Eastern U- in those separate states in eastern Ukraine. So, I don't know, when I say peacekeeper, I'm actually meaning... I'm actually meaning soldiers, troops. So it looks looking like uh, Comrade Vlad is getting ready to invade. Looks like he's just solidifying his solidifying solidifying his area. This morning there was a uh, a news report that there were Russians in Ukraine. No bombings yet. I I kind of doubt the some of these stories. And the reason I doubt, I, I can't imagine he's going to go with a ground offensive first and not just bomb something this it's not great strategy not great tactics basically you want to loosen up your front lines the ukrainian front lines and then you want to go in with the troop movement this is something that has been commonly done in just about every war russians did it with afghanistan united states did it with iraq twice and afghanistan once it, it it's not a thing that you usually do is just go in and send troops in. So I, I'm doubting that report. David Martin of CBS News reported on Face the Nation that, yeah, he thinks it's a done deal and it's going to happen. The president was very clear that he is convinced by U.S. intelligence that this invasion will happen, that President Putin decided to do it. How is he that certain? Because the intelligence says that Russian troops have actually received orders now to proceed with the invasion. So not only are they moving up closer and closer to the border into these attack positions, but the commanders on the ground are making specific plans for how they would maneuver in their sector of the battlefield. They're, they're doing everything that American commanders would do once they got the order to proceed. Now, let's be clear here. If he had said this two weeks ago or a week ago, I would have said, you're full of crap. I wouldn't have believed him. And I will talk about that why a little later. Because I still... I, I, I have my reasons why I just don't think Russia would go in or this wouldn't be a full shift. And right now what it's looking like is it's looking like this is going to be a, quote, minor incursion, end quote, like Joe Biden gave him, gave Vladimir Putin permission for. I don't think he's going to go all the way into Kiev in Ukraine. I think he's going to take over certain territories in Ukraine, quote, free them, end quote, and then go and then leave them alone. I don't think this is going to be a full war. But the reality is, why should we believe anything that the administration has said? Why should we believe any of the the intelligence? They jacked it completely up in Afghanistan. And they're jacking it up in China and in Iran. So, I I get what this guy's doing. I get get why he said it now. I mean, now we can see it. 60% of the troops in Russia are now in on the border of Ukraine, they're in, they're exporting blood to the front lines. Um, they're within three miles of the border. They're crossing into Ukrainian territory, into factions. 
um, into areas into areas of Ukraine that Ukraine can't control because of the pro-Russian sentiment. I get that. The Olympics are now over, so now Russia is feeling like, and they did have Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping did have a conversation before the Olympics started. So I'm sure Xi Jinping told Vladimir Putin, hey, do me a favor, hold off a little bit. And don't kid yourself here, Xi Jinping is really watching this, and he's watching this for a couple of reasons. Not just to see the United States' reaction so that he knows what to do with Taiwan. This is something he wants Russia to do. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the other thing is, looking at looking at the situation right now, if all the intelligence is true, this is what Russia does. Russia is has always been no, been to war. Um, Alexander Zolzitskin, uh, who wrote the uh, Gulag Archipelago, basically said that the reason Russians are never shocked about war is because they've only known war for the last three hundred years. The czars were war, were at war, were a warring people. The um, communists were a warring people, and now you've got a dictator who's a, who's actually a communist is is at war. Ukraine is always at war. Ukraine has been a free country, has been an independent free country for maybe twenty years, and they've had their land you know, kind of stripped away. They've got three territories of their country that don't really belong to Ukraine. So this is just what they do. So it makes sense. Now, I do want to point out one thing here, that Russia, that Donald Trump, you know, the guy with all the bad tweets, the great economy, great foreign policy, great uh, great domestic policy, but had a lot of bad tweets, never had Russia invade any country while he was president. The only president this century not to have Russia invade somebody. So under George Bush, Russia invaded Georgia. Now, granted, Russia pulled out of Georgia. George Bush had a lot to do with it, but Russia did feel that George Bush was weak enough that they could go into Georgia. Russia invaded Crimea under Obama. What did he do? He sent blankets to the bloody uh, uh, Ukrainians. That's the help. No stingers, no lethal weaponry. That's all he sent them. And now Russia is going to invade Ukraine under Biden. So, you know, lots of bad tweets, but at least... Uh, at least... Uh, he didn't and no one invaded well well Trump Trump was the only president in the last 50 years that didn't have a conflict on his hands yeah well what are you gonna do you probably already knew that so what are we doing about this well basically nothing um we should have done something by now to discourage Vladimir Putin from invading Ukraine we haven't done a bloody thing as a matter of fact, that's what that's what Zelensky, the President Zelensky over in Ukraine is saying. Why are you guys even talking? All you're doing is talking. Nothing. You keep talking about sanctions. Why aren't sanctions on Russia now? Why aren't you sending more lethal? Now you're sending us lethal weaponry when we need to learn how to use the lethal weaponry and train non-troops to fight? I mean... They, Biden, as a matter of fact, has been helping Russia do this by killing the Keystone Pipeline and, and approving the Nord Stream Pipeline. He made Russia the main oil produce exporter to Europe. We were the main oil exporters to Europe before Russia. Well, the good news about that is Germany, and I, I take this with a grain of salt, Germany said they are going to cancel the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. I, You know, Germany, throughout their history, has made nothing but bad decisions. So I'm not exact, and they've been pretty tight with Russia for years. So I'm not exactly too sure that that's going to be the truth. 
but the reality is we if if Biden hadn't canceled all of the oil contracts, hadn't canceled the the uh, XL pipeline, we'd be able to export oil to uh, to Europe, and we wouldn't be doing it from our reserves. We just have that much oil to export. Donald Trump was exporting oil and ca- storing oil during his presidency because remember oil was at negative value at one point so he just kept well not buying it getting money for it and then you got other problems i mean russia doesn't see the united states as a threat or anything russia russia vladimir putin doesn't care about sanctions okay the country's not going to get as much money the people are going to get hungry he doesn't care about that and now you got Biden exporting oil to to Europe. That was the other thing that happened last week. Wait a minute. Our gas prices are looking to be $4 a gallon nationwide. $4 a gallon nationwide. In California, they're talking between 5 and $7 a gallon because of this conflict. Gas, last I checked, it's already up 10%, 10 cents at my gas station. Down the street, it's up twenty cents, and now if this if this invasion occurs, yeah, it's going to go up a good forty fifty cents. So there is no reason, there is no reason to believe that this is not going to happen. There is no reason to believe anything's going to get better. And Joe Biden has done absolutely nothing and really pushed. This pushed Russia into doing this. Russia is just like, why not take over Ukraine? They want Ukraine. They believe Ukraine should always be there. They want that buffer between the uh, Russian mainland, Russia border, Russian border, and Western Europe. Why not go for Ukraine? Well, you can see more of this. Uh, just listening to these folks and looking at what they're doing. So Fox News' Jackie Heinrich questioned Jen Psaki of the White, the White House press secretary on why Biden didn't do any of these things and what are they actually doing. Because so far, they all they've done is they've sent diplomats places, well, everywhere except Russia to talk to them. So what is actually happening, and when are you guys going to do something? And she was pretty vicious with Jen Psaki. And Jen Psaki, well, listen to it first, and then we'll talk about it. Um, the sanctions, we've learned, don't include SWIFT. Uh, they don't target energy, so the impacts to other countries are mitigated. Um, you guys have attributed the cyber attack to Russia, and you're warning that the prospect of war is, uh, or peace rather, is pretty dim. So at, at what point do you break away from the strategy, say it's not working, and, and do something else, impose some of these sanctions now? Well, I think as we've talked about a little bit in here, our collective view from our national security team is that uh, sanctions are meant to be a deterrent. Uh, They are not, if you put all of the sanctions in place now, what is stopping them from invading? Well, again, Jackie, I think that's our assessment from the national security team, uh, and, uh, you know, that we will continue to uh, implement that strategy. To die before implementing them in that case. I think, Jackie, that's in no way a fair statement or accusation, I guess, if that's what that is. Uh, what we have done and what the president has done is unite hundred, uh, com- uh, countries around the world on a strong uh, package that will be crippling to the Russian economy. Okay, this is crap that they've been talking since this whole thing started. And the big question is, what deterrent is in place? This is not an insane question. This is a very good question. I don't even think it's an aggressive question. I think it's, what are you exactly deterring? You have no sanctions, nothing, you're not, they're not being attacked on anything. They haven't even taken down the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Nothing is happening with Russia right now. Where is the deterrence? But she and, and basically she just says, "Well, we're we're ta- we're binding our our allies together." Uh, Ukraine doesn't think so. 
And what exactly are the Allies doing? Listen, this is something I'm gonna I'm gonna let the jack in the box out. I'm gonna open the I'm gonna open Pandora's box here. Um, if nobody in Europe seems to give a damn about Ukraine, why should the United States? We got our own problems here. Worry about us. But you know why we're worried about us. And by the way, there are a ton of military officials and politicians that are saying the president should have done something by now. Should have set up some sanctions. You don't have to dump all the sanctions on him at once for this to be successful. Just set up a couple of sanctions say, hey, it's going to get worse. But he won't do that. Well, then Joe Biden did something brilliant. He sent Anthony Blinken to the United Nations to speak. I I don't know why. I, I have no idea what he thought was going to happen with the United Nations. But let's listen to a little bit of Blinken. Because the basic principles that sustain peace and security, principles that were enshrined in the wake of two world wars and a cold war, are under threat. The principle that one country cannot change the borders of another by force. The principle that one country cannot dictate another's choices or policies or with whom it will associate. The principle of national sovereignty. This is the exact kind of crisis that the United Nations and specifically this Security Council was created to prevent. These guys are such idiots. This is the same government's not even closing our borders, and they're worried about national sovereignty. We don't have national sovereignty in this country, according to this administration. 154,000 illegal aliens in this country, and they released 65,000 of them. That was just in January. What national sovereignty? By the way, I'm not even sure why he's in the United Nations talking to the Security Council. Russia's in, well, I don't know why we even have the United Nations in the United States. Personally, that's some pretty expensive, valuable property where the United Nations building is. You know, tear it down, send them to Brazil, and build a Starbucks there. I, I don't understand why we even have the the uh, UN. Why we're paying for it. Get rid of them. Get them out of there. And by the way, he's talking to the national, the Security Council. Russia's on the Security Council. So anything they can do could be rejected by, uh, can be rejected by Russia, can be vetoed by Russia. So what, what is he there for? And by the way, let's just say Russia did decide as a big joke to sit there and say, yeah, hey, yeah, Russia's a bunch of bad people. What is the U UN going to do? Are they going to send a letter? I mean, my Lord, the ineffectiveness. Here's a problem where bureaucracy has become an issue. It actually is stopping any kind of progress. Where we got to talk to... Trump never did that. Trump would call Vladimir Putin. Trump would call Xi Jinping or, or Kim Jong-un. Or he would travel there and say, what are you guys doing? Instead, we're going to the UN and making worthless speeches. Just words. Nothing but words. I mean, this is what you think. You think if this is the problem with America's not American, not learning history. Actions speak louder than words. Who said that? Benjamin Franklin. These guys would stop ignoring United States history and trying to change it all the time. Maybe they get some little factoids, little uh, nuggets of wisdom from people. Well, Kamala Harris also went to uh, Munich. This was something else that President Biden did that's supposed to do something to prevent a war. And she met with uh, Zelensky and she met with uh, NATO allies Uh <laughs> Listen to this. See if you can make any sense of it. We are prepared to move forward with consequences. We have prepared together economic measures that will be swift, severe, and united. We will impose far-reaching financial sanctions and export controls. Again, more words. 
at least this time she got to go to Europe. She accomplished nothing there. She's heading back. Nothing, nothing was made up. By the way, you know what Zelensky said when he heard that speech? He said, what difference does it make when after he attacks? Can't you do something before he attacks? Why, why not implement? He goes, he actually said, I don't see the purpose of sanctions after an attack. You might as well not sanction him. But that, and by the way, I confused the two quotes because I got a couple sound bites. Here's here's one. I Kamala Harris is such a bad politician. She doesn't know how to speak. She doesn't know any. I, I people complain that she does not prepare for her trips or her speeches. I believe it, especially after listening to this. She got a question about what the United States is doing again. And just like, just like Jen Psaki, no one knows in the Biden administration what they should do. Well, we want to keep a dip- we want to keep a diplomatic channel open. Well, yeah, but here's the problem: the diplomatic channel is closed. Russia doesn't want a diplomacy. They want a piece of Ukraine. Well, here she is giving an answer to one of those questions. It's just, oh, it's so brutal. I, I mean, I felt my balls crawl into my stomach listening to this. I mean, listen, guys. We're talking about the potential for war in Europe. I mean, let's really take a moment to understand the significance of what we're talking about. It's been over 70 years. And through those 70 years, as I mentioned yesterday, there has been peace and security. We are talking about the real possibility of war in Europe. So our position is for us very clear, which is as a leader, which we have been bringing together the allies, working together around our collective and unified position, that we would all not just prefer, we desire, we believe it is in the best interest of all that there is a diplomatic end to this moment. She is so full of crap. I mean, my God, what did she say? Well, what is a diplomatic end? Okay, so in other words, you're not going to do anything about this because you want a diplomatic end. That's essentially what she's saying. And guys, war in Europe, Europe has never been peaceful. Uh, We did have that little thing in Crimea. We did have that little thing in Serbia. We did have that little thing in Georgia. They have always been fighting over in Eastern Europe. They always fight. They still are fighting in Eastern Europe. 14,000 people were killed over the, the Crimea conflict. No one said a word about it. And according to Kamala Harris, we haven't had a war in Europe since 1944 or 1945, 1940, whatever it is. No, we've had, your, we've had problems in Europe. That's not true. But notice... She says, we're prepared, but she doesn't say what they're going to do. She doesn't say what they're doing. Give, give us some ideas here. Yeah, you know, here it is. They don't know what to do over there. And if you don't know what to do, Kamala Harris needs to get a speech, speech writer that says, yeah, we don't know what to do it far more eloquently than she said it. Because she sounded like a moron. And that's not the only one today. This was released today. I had to check this one out because I couldn't believe she had said this. Now, I'm going to give you the entire quote. So, here's the question she was asked. But if Putin has made up his mind, do you feel that this threat that has been looming is really going to deter him? In other words, the threat of sanctions. Is that going to deter Putin? And this is what she responded. And this is her entire response. I want to give her a break here. Absolutely. We strongly believe. And remember also the sanctions are a product, not only of our perspective as the United States, but shared perspective among our allies. By the way, I really don't give a damn what our allies think. And allied relationship is such that we have agreed that deterrence effect of these sanctions is still meaningful one. Is still a meaningful one. Especially because, uh, remember also, we still sincerely hope there's a diplomatic path 
out of this moment. You, you, you hear she's just completely lost. She doesn't even know what to say. And the sanctions aren't being implemented. They don't want to implement the sanctions. They want to talk. She continues, and within the, this is great, listen to this, it, and within the context then of the fact that the window is still opening, although open, although it is absolutely narrowing, but within the context of dip, of a diplomatic path still being open, the deterrence effect we believe has merit. The hell did she just say? This is completely embarrassing. Can you imagine when Joe Biden decides, I, I can't do this anymore? I, that is coming now. I really don't see Joe Biden making it through this presidency because he just looks worse and worse. And all this stress, he is too young to handle. Can you imagine when she becomes president? Well, so what's everyone saying here? Uh a lot of folks are saying it's too late. The United States and NATO has already sealed Ukraine's fate. They're going to be invaded. Speaking in Munich at the conference with uh, Kamala Harris, Volinsky, Zelensky said, Vladimir Zelensky said, uh, the president of Ukraine, quote, you're telling me that it's 100% that war will start in a couple of days. Then what are you waiting for? We don't need your sanctions after the bombardment will happen and after our country will be fired at or after we will have no borders or after we will have no economy or parts of our country will be occupied. Why would we need sanctions then? Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, this is something that I'm not sure if Zelensky is doing this on purpose or if he is uh, to mislead his people so that they don't panic, or whether Zelensky actually believes that Russia will not invade. I, I think, or a little bit in between, for example, I don't think Russia is going to go all the way to the capital of Kiev. I don't think that's going to happen. But why does the United States and all of Europe sit there and scream, oh, Russia's going to attack, Russia's going to attack. Why Why is everybody panicking more than, than um, Zelensky? Zelensky seems like the cool head in this thing. I'm sure he's not. I'm sure he's really worried. But maybe the rest of the world should kind of calm down a little bit. Or, if you're not going to calm down, do something. Poor Ukraine. They got to feel really alone right now. They got to feel like they're on stage and their fly is unzipped. Because no one seems to give a damn. Boris Johnson, the uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister <coughs> of Great Britain, said this will be the worst war since World War II. Quote, I'm afraid that is what the evidence points to. There's no burnishing it. The fact that all the signs are that the plan has already, in some senses, begun. I'm afraid to say that the plan we are seeing is for something that could be really the biggest war in Europe since 1945, just in terms of scale. Okay, I, you know, God dang. And by the way, that's what Biden is saying. And I, I'm just like, no, 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 no. Um, this could be a large, the largest incursion since World War II, but I probably don't think it's going to be. And even if they do take over Kiev, I, so what? Let them take it. That's that's politics. That's that's war. That's conquest. I can understand a little bit why Europe worries a little more, because Russia has done this before, and a lot of free countries were taken over, Hung Hungary, Poland, you know. But I wonder. If things are really this bad, why hasn't Europe done anything about it? Germany did say they were going to cancel the Nord Stream pipeline, but they just said it yesterday. So I'm not exactly sure they're, they have their hearts in it. NATO wants absolutely nothing to do with this. They don't want to send troops in. They want, want to shore up the border countries, but that's about it. 
Other European countries like France, they've been talking to Biden, but they've been relatively quiet about this whole thing. Poland doesn't even want refugees from from the Ukraine being sent to them. They why? Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. That's why. And they still are. They're an oligarchy. Uh, Vladimir Zelensky is trying his best to straighten that out, but it's still there. Ted Cruz, Cruz had a great synopsis of the possible conflict. Why the Biden administration doesn't get this is amazing to me. And why this isn't being pushed throughout the media, except on Fox News and other conservative outlets, I have no idea. This is what he said. Quote, Putin has long wanted to invade Ukraine. Putin has a very has been very candid. He has described the dissolution of the Soviet Union as, in his view, the most disastrous geopolitical event in the 20th century. And his ambitions have long resem- resembled the Soviet Union. He earns for what he sees as the days of Soviet greatness. If you're going to reassemble the Soviet Union, the first and most important part is Ukraine, the breadbasket of the former Soviet Union. Putin has invaded Ukraine before. He did so in 2014 when he invaded Crimea. But he stopped short. He didn't invade the entirety of the country. And the reason he didn't, because he needs Ukrainian energy infrastructure. Russia's major export is natural gas and oil, and that natural gas goes right through the middle of Ukraine Ukraine on pipelines. If he invaded Ukraine, he risked damaging and destroying the energy infrastructure, which would mean he could not get his natural gas to the market in Europe. Accordingly, the next year in 2015, Putin began building a pipeline called the Nord Stream 2, an undersea pipeline that goes directly from Russia to Germany, designed to circumvent Ukraine, so he could march into Ukraine and not risking his gas market. Wow. Pretty much. We all knew this. And he's been saying this for about 20 years. He, The statement about Ukraine belonging to Russia and Russia and the Soviets being the great, he said that back in like 2001. So this is nothing new. And people were arguing, this is the problem with the Nord Stream pipeline. You, you, you are really making it easier for Putin to start sending oil over to Europe. This is why I don't trust Germany to do the right thing here. Now, here's the thing. you got to break this down. This is all very complicated. It's not as simple as... It, this is the problem with politicians. They think it's, as, it's, it's always black and white, and everything is kind of simple, and it really is not not... It's really not over there. So, first thing, will Russia attack... Again, this is not black and white. I think it's kind of in the middle. Will they? Why would they? Well, tactically, they can. Ukraine, they can defeat Ukraine relatively easily. They outman Russia, they outman Ukraine 5 to 1. They have superior technology, and the Nord Stream pipeline will bring in about a billion dollars a day. U- Ukraine, he wants Ukraine to create a buffer zone between Western Europe and the Soviet border. So there is advantage, advantages to it. And he does love that Ukraine is part of Russia again. It's like Taiwan and, and China. It's the exact same thing. And Ukraine does provide wheat, which is what they need. Now, some reasons why they shouldn't attack, why they may be a little bit worried about attacking... Well, holding Ukraine is going to be long and difficult, and it's going to be expensive, and it's going to be bloody. Because the Ukrainians do not want Russia there. They're training their citizens to use weaponry and guerrilla warfare tactics, and the Ukrainians just absolutely hate them. They hate the Russians. They've always hated the Russians. And they could go to the mat on this one. Sanctions will sanctions could hurt Russia, will hurt Russia in the long run. Let, let, let's not forget that Russia does have the economy of uh, Italy. It, they do really do not have much of an economy over there. So that might be one of the reasons they say, well, 
we won't or we won't go all the way to Kiev. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. I think they're going to take over two territories in eastern Ukraine. I don't think they're going all the way in. That's what I think is going to happen. And the way they're positioning the troops, it sounds like that's what's going to happen. Um, I don't think Germany is going to give up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. So I don't think that's going to be a thing. But if Germany does give up the Nord Stream pipeline, that's a billion dollars a year that, that uh, billion dollars, excuse me, a day that Russia is going to lose. So it's very possible that this may not necessarily stop him from invading, but stop him from going all the way to Kiev. I tell you, if he takes over the two eastern territories that they're actually looking at, I can't pronounce the names. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he, I think he'll take over those. And that'll be it, and Europe will be fine with it. Um, as far as this World War III crap that they keep talking is breaking out, I doubt it. Granted, world wars have started for less. I mean, World War I started because a minister of a small country was, a president of a small country was killed. But I, it could be a problem in the future. Ukraine is insignificant on the world stage. They really don't provide anything. They don't have any massive exports. They don't have any massive imports. They're extremely corrupt. I'm not exactly sure why anybody anybody is freaking out about Ukraine being taken over. Now, I hate war. You don't want war, but let's let's be honest. It's Ukraine. It's not like Taiwan, which makes 95% of the chips in the world. That's the one we should be looking at and preparing for right now. We should have sanctions on China. Of course, the sanctions on China aren't working. We'll get to that later. It's a, it's a big story that no one's talking about, and, uh, and it's it's pretty bad, but that's the one we should be working out on right now. Not worrying about Ukraine. Let Russia go into Ukraine, but we better look over to China and worry about them because they could severely impact our economy. Uh, Russia has always wanted Ukraine. They're going to get Ukraine. The people of Ukraine will suffer. The people of Russia will suffer, but not the whole world is not going to flip out about it. I be, and we should if the whole world believes they want to flip out about it why didn't they do anything about Crimea Europe is not that worried about this all the talk is just talk now there are other things here to look at Xi Jinping is watching this whole mess for a reason there are two reasons one he wants to see what the United States is going to do if he decides within the next year or so to attack Taiwan and take over Taiwan. Taiwan is not moving in the direction as fast as they want. So chances are they're going to have to attack Taiwan. And I'm sure he loves what he's seeing. And he's going to have to do it soon. He's not going to, he can't wait until Biden's out of office because Biden's going to lose the election or whoever, Demo, whatever Democrat is going to end up losing the election. So that's going to be a thing. But Russia is also the ideological nemesis to China. China wants their version of communism throughout the world. And Russia is the only country that stands in their way. They, they're a communist country. They are very vocal about it. The Soviet Union was extremely imperialistic. China wants to weaken Russia, and they know that a war in a Mickey Mouse country is just the way to do it. So they want Russia to go in there, spend tons of money, lose lives. They want Russia to do that. That's why they've got uh, they've got uh, China's go ahead on this whole thing. But let's let's. I tell you what. What's really a big deal here is why are we even worried about this? Yes, that's very isolationist of me. I don't want to send troops over there. I don't want to send money over there. Let them deal with it. That's a European problem. Yet, let Europe deal with it. We've got high inflation, high crime, an unemployment, and a, a uh, supply chain crisis. We've got political division. We've got a border crisis. 
Maybe we should worry about ourselves, forget about Ukraine and their, quote, sovereignty, end quote, when we can't even control our own sovereignty in this country. It's really annoying. But President Biden needs this. He needs this to deflect. His poll numbers suck, and he needs this to deflect. What's really scary, that's how wars start. That's how Americans end up in war, because Joe Biden doesn't care about America. He just wants his power. And he's about to lose a huge election in November. Don't put put it past Joe Biden or his leftist organization, because Joe Biden is probably not even running anything, to send troops over there and make a war out of something that shouldn't happen. Just to deflect his incompetence on the domestic stage. It's... it's it can be scary. This can be scary. Okay, I went long. Sorry, Ukraine was a big subject, and it, it changes by the minute. So visit my website at dumbassestalkingpolitics.com to read the links. There are about 30 of them here. That's an exaggeration, or about 10. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. This is Gene, and you listen to Dumbasses Talking Politics.